Well, I guess I've been found out. The following program is brought to you in living color. You are listening to The Liberal Grouch. It's a ponderous situation. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? I think so, Dave. But where are we going to find a doctor to hose at this hour? More than two years, a persistent but stupid enemy has misunderstood our desire to live as free people. Well, you know, free men stood against the tyrant. stood against many. For more than two years, they've tried to silence those of us who believe that America is a nation of freedom for all, not just the privileged, not just for those who can afford justice. Yet, the enemy continues to misunderstand our motives. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? I think so, Brain, but there's still a bug stuck in here from last time. They fill the blogosphere with lies and misinformation. Where can one turn for the truth? This is where we hold them! We will fight them. This is where we fight! We will struggle until the end. Give them nothing, but take from them everything! We are not concerned with personal comfort. This is Sparta! We will fight until the enemy realizes our thirst for justice cannot be quenched. Lay your breakfast and eat hot. But tonight we die in hell. We will leave the right wing lickspittle mob of hypocrites dazed and confused. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Um, I think so, Blaine. But what if the chicken won't wear the nylons? Truth will overcome lies the way the light of day overcomes night. This I vow, for I am the liberal grouch. Ah! Yep, I've been found out. Hi, Bill Schmalfelt, the liberal grouch. Welcome aboard for another grouch cast. And the very smart geniuses that they have over there at uh, Hoagie Krendler Grady Corps, the very latest very smart theory of these geniuses is that I am faking the fact that my wife is in the terminal stages of her illness. I'm amazed at the sheer viciousness of these people and the lack of awareness. Do they not realize what monsters they sound like? Here's uh, the comment section from this morning's post on the thinking man zombie. We'll start with a comment by Father Paul Lemon who we'll talk about more at length later in the program. Quote, That sandy mangina reeks of fear. He needs the supersized janitor and a drum. And then he has a picture of a supersized janitor and a drum. Kyle Kiernan writes, I announced the start of the, Well, damn, I guess she's not really dying after all, pool. We've all seen this game before. I'm dying, I'm dying. Then on to another topic. He's kind of burned out using himself for that game, so now she's on deck. I expect the dogs are next. At some point, she's going to suddenly not be dying anymore, and it'll be on to the next outrage du jour. Gauging the shift will be tough, but I rely on the head zombie to judge that call. I'm merely a psychophant. My next guest is she becomes not dying on July 4th. 
And I think this is, I didn't get the name for this one or actually, let's just, let's just do this like a conversation. Gail's pretty clearly a tough cookie, what with her clientele and her tolerance for Cousin Bill's mistreatment, so I figure she can reasonably be dying for at least June and July. See, it's a guy who claims to be my cousin. If he were really my cousin, we would have smothered him in his youth. How do we mark this? When she's running errands, opening mail, changing his diaper... Working the truck stop? I don't wear a diaper. Oh, haven't you heard, Pablo? Billy can open his very own mail now. He made a YouTube video about it and everything. So either his stage 11 DPD symptoms are improving, or he's one asshole of a husband making his wife open a package of fertilizer that he claims made her vomit. See, it's... My fault that they sent me a Tupperware container filled with horse shit. And I couldn't get the envelope open, so my wife took it from me, and she opened it and smelled the horse shit and puked it into the sink. It's my fault. Paul Crandler writes, uh, Wait a minute. I foresee a problem here. If a person is dying and they complete the process and become dead, from a legal, technical point of view, aren't they also not dying? Correct. They are now rotting. The stalking sociopath's ragey blog posts speak volumes, and his wife is going to die knowing what a piece of shit he is, engaging in lawfare and stalking and screaming at people on the internet during her final weeks and months. He's garbage. Um, who else do we know that has a wife that has a potentially terminal disease. His name might be W.J.J. Hogue. His wife's name might be Connie. And she might have cancer. And uh, the law affair and all that other stuff, uh, who started it? Yeah, Hoagie. Hogue. Hoggy. The Elkridge Horror is a living epitaph, a scum-covered, rancid cesspool. And in case you missed it, Grace, I took June 11th in the pool. For GS expiration date? Cool. If so, thanks for letting me know, Howard. I had missed the fact that there was a pool going on. I'll take July 4th. It would be like her very own Independence Day. <laughs> Poetic, really. Gail is as comfortable as B.S. can make her. She said she was cold, so he covers her with Shiloh's pea-stained newspapers. She asks for a pillow, and B.S. holds one over her face till she passes out. Whenever she is hungry, B.S. makes her hobble outside and drive to the store for more food for both of them. Do you really think Bill is mentally competent enough? He did try to plead to diminish mental capacity, which is on the record, to ensure that both his and her medicines are taken correctly in the proper amount and on time. Knowing his organizational skills and what he has freely shared about his own mental health, I doubt it. When she passes on from this world, the coroner will probably mark the cause of death as suffocation by overweight spouse in the middle of the night. Do you get the nickel back in, Marilyn, for recycling? Sweet God. These are human beings talking about other human beings. <sighs> I'm actually speechless. I mean, it, it it is beyond my comprehension that people could have that much hatred in their hearts that they would attack the dying wife of a man for the fact that she is dying. 
Here's a little something I recorded earlier today. I realized I did not have a recording with Gail's voice. She's shy that way. So we, this afternoon we sat down and we chatted and she allowed me to record some of it. How are you feeling right now, hon? I'm just kind of like a slug. A slug? Yeah. Define that. Yeah. No, define that. Define it? Kind of just over bloated and moving real slow and uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, have, a, have a bad time getting up and down from chair to the. I mean, slugs don't have chairs. <laughs> Even in the face of all this, she keeps her sense of humor. She feels like a slug. She's talking about the trouble of getting out of a chair, and she mentions that slugs don't have chairs. To the haters. To the people who find enjoyment in this, what is the most horrible thing a person can go through, the loss of a spouse. To the people who are reveling in this I don't have words there's nothing I can say that will shame you because you're not capable of shame no she's not faking she has more integrity in a single fingernail than the entire Hogue Krendler crew has in their entire collective beings disgusting loathsome filth. I'll see you in court, boys, and, uh, Hoggy, I got a little something-something for you. But you're gonna have to wait until June 3rd. You are listening to The Liberal Grouch. The ram has touched the wall. That was the old-time Roman battle call. And what that meant was that you must surrender your weapons tender, and Caesar would let you live. But all that matters, the ram that batters, once it touches your walls, he won't forgive. The ram has touched the wall. And in the old days, that meant towns would fall. But nowadays some guy who thinks he's Caesar, this wheezing geezer, who thinks he's smarter than all. Up to his neck and shit, he don't know when to quit. The ram has touched the wall. The ram has touched the wall. The ram has touched the wall, and that must surely mean the end of all of our concerted efforts to negate all the filth and hate and to give up without a fight. Yet every pervert will feel the butt hurt when they see I've got them dead to rights. The ram has touched the wall, but the specific ram he's got no ball. And all that he can do is sit and mumble and break and crumble Cause he's behind the eight ball He may not know it yet, but he will soon regret The ram has touched the wall The ram has touched the wall But it is not the wall he thought would fall The chowder head who causes agitation to defamation I see him soon here in court this snotty whiner, a palatiner, better hope that I'm the forgiving sort. The ram has touched the wall. It turned out not to be a ram at all. Who would have guessed that stupid right-wing creeps would show up with sheep? In fact, the ram was a lamb, and you should hear them cry. Now that we've caught the lie... Oh, the wall has touched the lamp, poor little sheepy. The wall, the wall, 
the wall. The wall, the wall has crushed the land. Now, hi there. I'm the liberal grouch. And I'm not one of those evil grouches you hear so much about over there on the right wing. I'm one of those nice grouches over here on the left wing. And I'd sure like to be your friend. Wouldn't you like to be my friend? I hope you would. Why not come by my Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash the liberal grouch cast. That's all one word, you know www.facebook.com slash the liberal grouch cast and like the page and I promise I like you a whole lot thank you now let's get on with our business sitting on a corn bench I is a teenage girl with bad intent. Poop is caked into his beard. Stubby fingers scratch his scabby head. Hey, hockey man. Dying from his bad heart. Skin made gray from hate and lack of sun. Hey, hoggy man. Knows that he's a dead duck. Spitting out clots from his rotting lungs. Oh, hoggy man. So freaking old. A sick man wastes his last days Spending time the only way he knows Chest hurting bad As he staggers to the courthouse He wants to try once more his foe to beat Leave her alone, that's all her father asked. Forget that we exist and just let us be. Hoggy man, you fool, don't you know that you're a loser? You foolish dolt, the truth won't set you free. You still remember the last time you went to court When you thought that just your lying word would your opponent thwart And you sit in startled silence when justice reared its head And the judge said he's not guilty in the least So freaking old, a sick man wastes his last days Spending time the only way he knows. Chest hurting bad as he staggers to the courthouse. He wants to try once more his foe to beat. Oh, leave her alone. That's all her father asked. Forget that we exist and let us be. Hoggy man, you fool! Don't you know that you're a loser? You foolish dolt! The truth won't set you free! Oh,
his beard. Stubby fingers scratch his scabby head. Hey, hoggy man. Dying from his bad heart. Skin made gray from hate and lack of sun. Hey, hoggy man. Knows that he's a dead duck. Spitting out clots from his rotting lungs. Ooh, hoggy man. sound so happy about. Bill Schmalfeld here. I invite you to visit our website sometime, www.theliberalgrouch.net. That's the, 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 the liberalgrouch.net. Of course, our news website is Patriot Ombudsman. That's all one word, patriotombudsman.com. And uh, you're cordially invited to visit us there anytime as well. Uh, let's see here. <sighs> the filth just flows from these people. Yesterday I was made aware of a new Twitter account calling itself Derp Grouch. And there was one tweet on the account. It was a picture of a James Bond-looking character uh, with my head attached. Bill Schmalfelt, the Deadpool, is she dead yet? W. J. J. Hoag the Third, Patrick G. Grady a.k.a. Paul Krendler. This is on you. This is the result of the hatred you sow. This is the whirlwind you shall reap. I have no idea which of your many sock puppets this derp grouch is. The user has been reported and hopefully by now has been wiped from the filthy cloaca of your shit-encrusted universe. He wrote, Karma is a bitch, ain't it? Take the cure. That's their code for, I should kill myself. Karma? For what? For fucking what? Does my wife deserve to die a slow, oxygen-deprived death? 
for fucking what do I deserve to sit to have to sit here and watch as this nightmare unfolds while you and your followers throw shit like this at me? Do you think this is going to make me drop my lawsuits against you? Quite the opposite. This fuels the fire, boys. This makes me even more ready to see your asses sitting in the defendant's docket so I can show the jury what sorry fucking excuses for humanity that you are. Hug, when you announced your wife had cancer, I reached across the abyss to offer assistance. It was heartfelt, genuine, and you shit all over it. Your brain is so twisted with hatred for my exposing your lies and your duplicity. You put your hatred for me above your wife's own welfare. And now you allow people to post avatars on your blog, despite a lawful cease and desist, avatars that depict my wife in varying stages of decay and decomposition. If you were a decent man, you'd put a stop to this. You would at least speak out against it. But then again, a decent man would not lie to a disabled person that he knows would appreciate not having to make an unnecessary trip to Westminster, tell him he's not going to pursue an appeal for a denied peace order when he knows he plans to do just that, chuckling to yourself about getting an uncontested peace order. A decent man doesn't start a part or doesn't play a part, that is, in making phony copyright applications or receiving copyrights that are fraudulent and will not stand a court test. But you're not a decent man, are you, Hogue? You have no concept of how vile you are because that is your normal state. Grady, can't wait. To see you squirm in the defendant's chair as I show the judge and the jury image after image of your foul, defamatory filth. I do not believe in hell, but if I did, I would get on my knees tonight and pray for God to damn the both of you to an eternity of agony. But the God I believe in doesn't do that to his children. He wants us to love each other and treat each other the way we want to be treated. Our Heavenly Father would not countenance the idea of forever punishment. I know that in my soul. I also know that a corrupt individual reaches a point where he's more rot than healthy tissue. That's where you are, Hug. And Grady, you're just a fucking psychopath who should be put away for the good of society. As God is my witness, I will move whatever mountain I must to make you both pay and pay dearly for this. your mind which one you are I'd like to wake up and find Crendler or Grady fear defines what you are I own you I own you I own you I own you Crendler or Grady you're not very smart you craven coward, you've made it an art. Crendler or Grady, fool whichever you are. I own you, I own you, I own you. You write like a moron, and I'm being kind. There's no use in fighting. What's yours will it be mine. Crendler or Grady, I'll see you in court. Won't strip you naked, I'll leave you some shorts. Crendler or Grady, do you know who you are? I own you, I 
own you. I own no. you. I, I, I own you. Yes, soon you will be mine. Thought you were clever. You're out of your mind. Crendler or Grady. Fear defines who you are. I own you. I own you. I own you. You are listening to The Liberal... Grouch. Now, late last year, when I recorded uh, my one and only opera <laughs> uh, called uh, 2016 A Race Odyssey, a comedy opera by Bill Schmalfeld, I had no idea that there'd be this many Republican candidates seeking the nomination. So we uh, probably could have had a lot more fun recording this than we did, but here it is. Well, hi there. I'm glad you came by this recording. Yes, sir. A lot of folks wonder what happened in that year of 2016. So long ago, but so fresh in our memories. Yes, sir. Of course, what happened in 2016 uh, didn't really start in 2016. It probably started back in 2009 when uh, the first African-American president, Barack Hussein Obama, became president. And the Republicans in Congress did everything they could to keep him from getting any serious legislation passed. And then in November 2014, they finally achieved their goal. They had a Republican control of the Senate and the House of Representatives and spent that whole next two years with one failed vote after another trying to get enough votes to impeach President Obama. Oh yeah, they got rid of Obamacare. Hell, they did that right away. President wouldn't have signed the bill, so they overrode his veto. <laughs> and that was the beginning of the end. Well, that moves us up now to 2016. Obama, he's a lame duck now, and he's not really thinking that much about his future. He's, you know, planning uh, retirement, I guess. And Already, the Democratic field seems pretty well set, while the Republicans are in a state of disarray trying to decide uh, who would be the best candidate for them. Like I said, the Democrats had a pretty good idea of who they were going to nominate. So, why don't you just sit back there for a little while and... Oh, have a sip of something while I relate the story of 2016, A Race Odyssey. Uh, hello there, Haley. Nice to see you again. You too, Bill. How long has it been? Oh, I think it was about back when the grandbaby was born. What you been doing since then, baby? Oh, baby, you do not want to know the answer to that Well, one. you know you're going to have to watch your step for the next eight years. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> back to the White House, back to the White House, back to the White House. Won't it be great? Back to the White House, back to the White House, back to the White House, you'll be first mate. 
No fucking around, don't act like a clown, no more with the bimbos, promise me that. A quick little glance, it won't take the chance, it stays in my pants, I promise you that. Back, back to, to the White House, house back, back to the White House, house back to the White House, for eight more years. We're back to the White House, back to the White House, back to the White House, bangers and tears. <laughs> Oh, you are inevitable, uh, baby. That's what you said back in 07. Yeah, but this time there ain't no smooth-talking black fellas sneaking up on you. Did you take care of O'Malley? Oh, yeah, he's been taken care of. Yeah. I still don't see what an East Coast liberal like O'Malley can add balance. Fuck balance, baby. <laughs> You're Hillary Clinton, <laughs> not Elizabeth Warren. Oh, that's <laughs> true, that's true. <laughs> Back to the White House, back to the White House, back to the White House, election day. There won't be no drama, you the big mama, ain't no Obama, get in your way. I'll govern with class, no ceiling of glass, that big rod of mass in my office chair. I'll restore our fame by staking my claim. Executive Dame, you're practically there. You know, I wouldn't want to hurt Barack's feelings, but when I was Secretary of State, I practically was the president. So it's not like I won't know what I'm doing when I get there. Oh, and that beside the point, baby, you had the best mentor in the presidency you could ever have of yours truly. Boy, I miss that Oval Office. You miss that little alcove in the Oval Office back by the kitchen there. That's what you miss. God, I can't believe I didn't shoot you right between the eyes back then. Well, that would have shot your chances to hell now, wouldn't it? Think about it. Being in jail for assassinating the president. That's a pretty rough beef right there, baby. Well, you can thank your daughter Chelsea that you're alive because, believe me, I was tempted. I was very tempted. Tell me about temptation, but it won't really matter, and you know why. I'll be in the White House, be in the White House. You'll be the first spouse, I will be next. Just keep your big mouth shut, practice your golf putt. Don't say a thing, but party line text. I'll be a good boy, your pride and your joy. I won't say a thing to fuck up your will. I'm happy to hear you'll keep yourself clear of scandal. Remember, I got a gun. Yes, I have a gun. And it ain't for fun. <laughs> Remember Vince Foster, good old Vince Foster. Think of it foster if you should stray. I won't let a horn dog be a career clog in this campaign slog. Hear what I say. Don't act like a turd and don't say a word unless that you've heard. I've said it's okay. I'll be like a mouse. I'm not the same louse. And back to the White House where we will stay. When your second term expires, how old will Chelsea be? 2024? That should be 44. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? 16 more years of Clinton's in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. That's what I always loved about you, Bill. You think ahead like a politician. Now, get out of here. I got work to do. Well, that's all right. I got a date tonight anyway. You son of a bitch. Just kidding, baby. Just kidding. Lay that pistol down, baby. Yep. It's like I said, everybody had a pretty good idea who the Democratic nominee was going to be. Bernie Sanders, an uh, independent socialist, thought about throwing his hat in, but uh, at best he was going to be a third party candidate and he knew it. Elizabeth Warren, uh, she was attractive at first to the 
really far left of the Democratic Party, but it ain't pretty clear she was too far left for the country's current mood. Martin O'Malley, governor of Maryland, well, former governor anyway, uh, he made a run for it, lasted one primary, he came in third in Iowa. Uh, I don't remember who came in second, somebody I never heard of. But uh, it was set, it was going to be Hillary Clinton. Republicans, well, they weren't near as set. Matter of fact, <laughs> even old Mitt Romney was thinking about throwing his hat back in the ring. We are in need of a businessman to set priorities straight. I should have beaten the John McCain way back in 2008. I'll run again, I'll run again. I wish you wouldn't, I wish you wouldn't. I'll run again, I'll run again. And this time I will win because the last eight years of Obama's rule have caused a terrible fix. The debt is higher than it's been since 1926. I'll run again, I'll run again. The debt is low as it's been in decades. I'll run again, I'll run again. With you right there by my side. No more of these foreign sounding names. This time they'll choose old Mitt. Just like they would have the last time if the media weren't poop. I'll win the primaries when I am nominated. Then I'll show them there is no way that you can keep a Mormon down. Oh, yes, my love, you should have won. And then we both agree. But don't you see what this campaigning has done so far to me? I'm under stress, I have MS, my hair is falling out. And golly, don't you remember that you said you wouldn't run? But now this time it seems the nation's calling me. I have to run again because the him would never let me live it down after we're dead. When you and I are ruling our planet, I really don't think that Elohim wants your wife to lose her hair and life just for your ego. I think Elohim has a better plan for us than blowing on the cash on a campaign. You really think so? Oh, yes, I do. Yes, dear, it's true. That's so. Tell me, where is your trust? Back in the bus. Thought so. I'm the bishop here, let me make that clear. I'm the one who makes decisions. Shit. I think the country really needs a businessman to clear up all this Wall Street tangle. I really think the country wants a businessman, and that will be my campaign angle. So just forget me. I am your wife in every life. I know. And if you run again, this is the end. Uh, no. We are bound for life, Mormon man and wife. If you leave, you get no planet. Shit! So do you think I ought to run for president? Third time is the charm, they tell me. Why, yes, my love, I think you should be president. And even if the campaign kills me. Great! That's one thing you gotta say about old Mitt Romney persistent. But he wasn't the only person uh, given the Republican nomination serious consideration. There was this nutcase down in Texas who had been a senator for four years uh, by that point. Yep, went by the name of Ted Cruz and nobody outside of the real far right wing wanted him to run, but uh, he was he was bound and determined. Uh, his, his own campaign manager tried to talk him out of it, in fact. Listen, Ted, I'm your chief of staff, and I don't even know what my name is, so that's as far as I can go with this exposition. But don't you think you're pushing things by running for president this early? I recall a certain fellow who got elected to the Senate first time, and four years later, he was president of the United States of America. A lad from Illinois, was he, with a weird foreign-sounding name. Yeah, but you ain't Barack Obama. Obama? 
I was talking about Abraham Lincoln. But Lincoln lost the 1858 election. And that was before senators were chosen by popular vote. Their state legislators appointed them. And even though Lincoln got more votes, they sent Stephen Douglas. I ain't talking about the part Eddie Arnold played on Green Acres. I'm talking about the first Republican president of the United States, and the greatest one, uh, despite that emancipation thing. And I will be next. But I just think that... I don't know what you're worried about. Take a pill and chill out. It will be a fucking route for good old boy Ted Cruz. Jesus told me I should run, and you know he's God's son. He said I'm the chosen one. No way that I can lose. No one in the GOP stands a chance next to me. Sober up and you will see I ain't no fake to the White House I will glide on a wet slip and slide And with Jesus by my side, big piece of cake Romney, kiss my Christian ass, Perry ain't got no class Jeb will probably take a pass, his last name still is Bush Walker, who the hell is he? Rubio, can't you see? Dumbass Cuban boy is he? That's something I can push uh, let me clarify that last statement there. In the past, Daddy split from Cuba fast cause Castro was a red. I was born in Calgary, Canada. So you see, Cuban don't apply to me. That's what my pappy said. I became American. That way now I can run. And it will be lots of fun. And I will win. It'll be a piece of cake. Hillary's back. I will break. And you should make no mistake. That would be sin. Hilly is a commie witch, socialist lefty bitch. I will whoop her with a switch, leave Waltz there on her ass. I will cook her fascist goose, look out Ted's on the loose. I will spank her fat caboose and serve it under glass. This'll be a piece of cake, piece of cake, piece of cake. This'll be a piece of cake, cause Jesus told me so. Romney's just a Mormon fool, Jindal is Satan's tool. Christy can sit there and drool, pecker he can blow. Grandpa don't mean shit to me, neither does Huckabee. Ryan reeks of therapy, he oughta know. This'll be a piece of cake, piece of cake, piece of cake. Sitting there for me to take on with our show. Line him up, I'll mow him down, I ain't no Cuban clown. And my skin ain't clear as brown as Marco Rubio. If Grandpa accepts his fate, he could be running mate. Or else he can sit and wait till 2032. What's that? How's that? I will win two terms and that'll last for 16 years. I goofed. You're spoofed. I know that a president can only serve eight years. Bullshit. Bullshit. Bull. Ah. Fuck it. Well, it was about that time when Ted Cruz threw his hat in the ring that most of the sensible people decided that they didn't want any part of the nomination if it would matter crawling in and mud wrestling with Ted Cruz, so... Well, one by one, they began to fall by the wayside. Each of them had a good reason for not running, of course. I will never be the President, that is one fact that I'm fairly certain of. Not because I'm wrong on immigrants, moderate, civilized, mama's favorite son. I will never be the president. Write that down, carved in stone, in your memory push. Just because my, just because my, just because my, Name's Bush. <sighs> Remember how popular my dad was when he won that first Gulf War? Bush. His popularity went through the floor because he raised taxes when he said he would never raise taxes, but he did because it was the right thing Bush. to do. And then Bush. my developmentally disabled brother Bush. George W. leapfrogged ahead of Bush. me and pretty well screwed up politics for the rest of my family for the next few decades by starting a war we had no business fighting against an enemy that was no threat to us. Remember that? I sure do.
I was governor of Florida, did a good job, I'm told, with that I agree. I would make a decent president, not a nutcase or some wingnut extremist. But I'll never be the president, take that right to the bank in a locker push. Just because my, just because my, just because my name is Bush. Chris, you're smart, but you're fat. That's what they all said, Chris. You're tough, but you're fat. And soon you'll be dead, Chris. Get a clue. Lose a fat. The people told me, sure. What the hell? This is easy done as said, right, Chris? It's a sin. You're so fat. The pundits all said, Chris, you can't win. You're too fat. The headlines all read, Chris, you don't have to be fat. Go see your doctor, see if he will do stomach staple surgery. I let the sawbone staple my gut and lost some weight. I lost some weight. I bought new suits that would fit my new butt and started planning for 16. I put a huge padlock on my fridge. I lost some weight. I lost more weight. And then those morons shut down the bridge. My shrinking weights had gone to waste. I lost the weight. Yeah, I lost the weight. Thought it was my fate to be the party centrist nominee. I lost the weight. Boy, I lost the weight. But what fucking good did it do me? I'm looking great at my current weight. Toting far less freight in my caboose. My pants are loosey-goosey. Screw all that. Back when I was fat, no one had the balls to abuse me. So now I'm slim. I'm fit and trim. I am at the gym. Lift weights and swim. But now I'm grim, my future dark and dim, because a knucklehead shut down a bridge. With all I lost, what did I gain? For what did I endure the pain? So dim what's good, close down a traffic lane, and tie up traffic for days on the bridge. I'm finished. Anyway... For a while there, it looked like Ted Cruz might have clear sailing to the nomination, which, of course, (laughs) that made Hillary Clinton pretty happy, but Mitt Romney was still in there swinging, and swinging, and swinging, and swinging. I take a firm position, and I stand like this. But I don't disregard the shifting sand like this. When someone carves his talking points in stone like Chris, it makes it hard to reinvent yourself and makes it seem like you've been taken out of context in sound bites like this. You cannot win debates when someone fights like this. It's certainly clear as can be. You cannot pin a man down when he's slippery and oily as can be like this. The Book of Mormon says it's right to lie like this. It's okay to prevaricate when telling lies to win a prize that glorifies and signifies the glory of the Lord the way I do. Like this. The other guys will see that when they're through. Like this. You must admit that they will quit when they all realize that they've been shown to be unfit to tie my shoes. Like this. Well, Dad, I gotta say it certainly sounds like you got your stuff together this time. What do you mean this time? I had it together last time, too. Mm, Yeah, I just don't think that uh, 47% thing I helped you any. I didn't realize that there was a camera in the room, and besides, if the people can't handle a simple truth, how are they going to handle eight years of me as president, huh? Huh? Well, you raise a good point there, Pop. I'll win the nomination if I run like this. And then I'll lead the nation when I've won, like this. Old Hillary will have to see she doesn't stand a chance because the voters want a leader who can lead, like this. Well, as days went on, Mitt Romney was uh, still in there pitching, but no one was hitting him. Mitt finally just kind of drifted. 
drifted off into obscurity. <laughs> he looks good over there. So I kind of left it up to Ted Cruz. It uh, looked like he was going to win the nomination. Until one day he filmed a campaign commercial. You ain't going to believe what happened. Ted Cruz for president. Gun safety. This is take 23. Action. Hi. Ah. This here's Ted Cruz, and if you don't know me by now, you're never gonna know me at all. <laughs> That's just a little joke. But anyway, I'm here to talk about gun safety. You know, the gun grabbers, they can't hardly wait until Hillary gets elected so they can come to your house and take all your guns. Well, I'm here to tell you that if anybody tries to lay their hands on my gun, I'll blow a hole through them that the wind will blow through. You ever hear a wind blowing through a hole before? <sniffs> oh, sorry. <laughs> that, was a, that was a chili I had for lunch. Anyway, you got to just be careful with a gun. You know, you don't wave it around willy-nilly like this Colt 45 I got in my hand here. We make sure that whatever you're pointing that thing at is something that you are willing to kill. Don't fuss around with it. It ain't no toy. Don't ever point it to your head like I'm doing now because you never know when the son of a bitch is going to... Ooh, that was loud. Hey, that looks like the top of my head laying on the ground over there. And whose brain is that? Cut. Meanwhile, about the same time all this was going on, the 44th President of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama, sat in the Oval Office staring at his desktop. He knew his time was coming to a close, and felt sad about everything he had hoped to change, but because of the Republicans stonewalling, it would be all left undone. He'd have to hope that Hillary could pick up where he left off, but he had no false illusions about her devotion to actual liberal causes and knew her to be a uh, Wall Street Democrat. But still, there's hope. I'm gonna miss this place. Girls grew up here. I hoped for change. I must have been insane cause I can't do it by myself. I hoped for change It soon went up in flames My legacy on the shelf I thought that I could be The guy to set us free Still, I must have been crazy To think the right would not fight just to keep the right to their privilege white. <sighs> I gave it my best shot. I hoped for change And you may think it's strange I thought I could fight the system and win I hoped for change I just could not arrange And now my hope's wearing thin I fought the GOP and turned around to see, to see that no one had my backside. They left me to hang and twist in the wind, my liberal base, my 
space how they quickly deserted and then they turned against me and I fought like hell my numbers fell and fell Hoped for change. I thought that I could bring it. I tried, but then nothing changed. My hoped for change. No one can rearrange. This tangle, my dream, my dream of hope and change. Say that again. Oh shit! Well, when's it, when will this be? Do we have a contingency for this? I mean, I thought we had a contingency for this. Ah, ha, ha. I see. Well, uh, gather the national security team and. We'll meet in the Situation Room in a half hour. This is a hell of a thing to tell me, kid, but thank you. And thank you for your service. Well, it's not the change I hoped for. This is Anderson Cooper, along with my, uh, well, my typical New Year's Eve co-host, uh, Kathy Griffin. Uh, Kathy... How is it that you ended up uh, being chosen by CNN for convention coverage? Well, I think it was because they knew this was going to be a pretty boring affair and they were hoping maybe I'd take my shirt off or something like that. I see. Well, the delegates have decided to forego the traditional roll call vote and uh, it looks like they're going to just appoint Hillary Clinton by acclamation. Let's go to the floor.
Why, yes, it uh, appears to be the Supreme Pontiff of the Holy Roman Catholic Church, the Pope. This is unprecedented in the history of American politics. He's taking the ring off of his finger, and with some difficulty, he's shoving it onto Hillary Clinton's finger. I guess this signifies that the uh, Christian Catholic establishment is supporting Hillary Clinton. Well, I guess if I'm going to take my shirt off, I better do it now before they start singing again. Oh. done deal, Kathy. Uh, Hillary Clinton is the official nominee. Oh, Kathy, put those away. So the Democrats put the crown on Hillary Clinton and Bill stood in the wings watching and waiting. The Republicans weren't quite as uh, filled with jubilation as the Democrats were when uh, the delegates went filing into the convention center there in Cleveland that summer. Air to break up. Air to break Bunch of sad critters, all right. Well, they went through about 10, I think 15 maybe, ballots and couldn't find anybody to get a majority. And then, as will sometimes happen, somebody you weren't even thinking of come crawling out of the woodwork. A clear superior nominee is someone like Rand Paul, a libertarian option who would satisfy us all. He'll keep us out of the foreign wars and build a border wall. He'll be our president, what a president, I support Rand Paul. He understands the government, can see the every need. He'll do away with the Fed and legalize our favorite weed. To all America's enemies, he'll never bow and plead. We'll mind our businesses, stick to businesses, Rand Paul, that we need. I place in the nomination, our Rand Paul, a man who can't ignore his nation's call. He understands that our founders made way clear what they meant. They saw no need for central government. A son of Kentucky, please vote for Rand Paul. He has the slightest charming southern. He'll reinstate the gold standard, shut down Capitol Hill, as President Rand Paul will do our will. Let's choose Rand Paul and send him on his way to landslide victory on Election Day. No more U.S. intrusion, no more Fed confusion, no more foreign fights. He don't care if you're black or white. He'll let the local folks decide their fates. He knows this nation is the United States. There's no pot prohibition, all on one condition. You gotta vote for Rand Paul. But what about God? In favor of God. Jesus Christ too. Likes Jesus too. Only support prayer is cool. If that's what the states want. And what about gay? The states will pray. And what about straight? It's up to the states. It sounds like you're saying the states will have the power. Right. Who needs a central government? Who wants a central government? You'll do away with those who say it's from your pockets. We should 
pay for roads and bridges. People are not fools. He'll shut down federal funding for the schools. In public, there'll be prayer. Won't fleece the taxpayer. Clean your food and water. Do it local like you order. If you want to breathe polluted air, well, that's your choice. We really could not care. He'll stay out of your business with God as my witness. You really should vote for Rand Paul. But what about guns? He loves him some guns. And our civil rights. That's up to the whites. Because after all, we, we are still majority. So slavery's cool. If that's your state's rule, if we segregate, that's up to your state. It's not an easy job to, to legislate morality. Starting to sound just like a president, a great American president. We'll back Ron Paul up to the wall and he just calls, so come on all and get in line and nominate Rand Paul. A man who heard and answered heaven's call. He knows our blessed nation's in need of salvation. He will not negotiate with those who would deny each state the right to make and live by their own rules. To plan and legislate what's taught in schools. It's Rand Paul that we favor. He's our nation's savior. Everyone in favor say I. I! So, with the 2016 conventions out of the way, the campaigning began in earnest, and Hillary found herself to be not quite as inevitable as she thought she was. For one thing, people liked the idea that Rand Paul was putting out there about government getting entirely out of their lives. You see, when a man is promising you the moon and telling you you don't got to pay for it, it's a, you got to be a really, really smart person to say no to that. <laughs> America wasn't really blessed with a ton of smart people back in them days. So, it came down to the final week before the election and the last time that Rand Paul and Hillary Clinton took the stage together, it was their third and final debate. And something unfortunate happened. Decided the election. You have called me a socialist. Well, I must say that is quite a twist. You have called me a commie witch, using a word that rhymes with witch. You have called me a troglodyte, that's a low dirty way to fight. But I suppose that is all you saw, living there with Bill up in Arkansas. Well, I have been called so many names, and I refuse to play petty games. But I must say, sir, with just one glance, it's quite apparent that you wet your pants. I wet my pants. You wet your pants. I can't believe it that you wet your pants. I wet, wet my, my pants. pants. I wet my pants. On live TV, I just soaked my pants. He wet his pants. pants. I wet my pants. Like a big baby, he wet his pants. He should have chosen darker threads. You can see the stain as it spreads. He wet his pants. He soaked his pants. You can't but notice with one small glance I think the message that Rand Paul sends Is don't do TV without the pens You wet his pants! You wet his pants! And you were winning till you wet your pants He wet his pants! pants. He wet his pants! And it's all over now you've wet your pants! Oh shit! Well, my friends, uh, there's a lot of slip-ups and faux pas that a candidate can survive. 
mispronouncing somebody's name or tripping on the steps walking to the podium, that kind of thing, you know, but pissing your pants on live TV and then blubbering about it like a baby, <laughs> that ain't something the American voter is likely to overlook. So when election day came, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion who was going to run off with it. And she did. Baby, I always knew you were going to win, but <laughs> you won every state. Yep. You got all the electoral votes. Every one of them. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> well, he peed his pants on television. What yeah, you know? even I couldn't have pulled that one off and got reelected. <laughs> Back, back in the, the White, White House, House, back in the White, White House, House, back, back in, in the White, White House, House. It was this time for good. Back in the White House, back in the White House, back in the White House, just like we should. Democrat House, the Senate is too. We'll pass our agenda, every state blue. You shattered the glass, you whooped Rand Paul's ass. That pants wedding moron singing the blues. Back, back in the White House, back in the White House, back in the White House, and they'll all see. Back in the White House, back in the White House, back in the White House. Look, the TV. Always probably just more this is CNN Breaking News. Uh, this is Wolf Blitzer. Uh, we interrupt our election night coverage to report this uh, uh, literally earth shattering news. According to scientists from the uh, Palomar Observatory, the Earth is moments away from a collision with an asteroid about one-third the size of the moon. Scientists predict the asteroid will strike the Pacific Ocean just south of Hawaii in a matter of moments. Uh, wait, wait just a moment. I, I've just been informed by my producer that President Obama is going to make a statement about the asteroid from the Oval Office. He rarely makes announcements from the Oval Office, choosing to use the East Room for that. So this must be important, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. My fellow Americans, <laughs> um, guess what? We are uh, about a minute or so away from being killed by a huge asteroid that will strike the Pacific Ocean turning it into steam in a matter of seconds, and the shock of impact will set off earthquakes, tidal waves, and uh, all kinds of nasty stuff like that. But you won't have to worry about it. We'll all be dead from the shock caused by the impact. Now, you have every right to ask yourself, why didn't the government warn us about this? Didn't they know? <laughs> Fuck yeah, we knew. We've known about this bad boy for the last six months. We've been charting it, plotting it, and came to the realization that there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, no, no time to build a rocket or anything to get uh, humanity off the planet into safety. Uh, Republicans uh, cut the NASA budget, remember? Uh, they cut every fucking thing except tax breaks for the rich for the last two years, and you stupid redneck teabagging sons of bitches let it happen. Uh, and when everything turned to shit, and unemployment went up to 15%, and we defaulted on our loans because the Republicans wouldn't budge, you stupid bastards blamed me for it. You blame me for every Republican fuck-up since 2009, and uh, now I've seen to it that the uh, kids, Sasha and Malia, have been uh, put to sleep, as they say, so they won't have to go through this. I've made the same offer to Michelle, but she wouldn't take the pills, so 
She's uh, standing here beside me, right here. These will be my last words, the last words ever broadcast, the signals being sent out into the universe for perhaps someone to hear someday. Fuck you. And yes, he I was me again. in Kenya. He fucked me again! Why, the moon sure got bright all of a sudden. That ain't the moon, you hillbilly son of a... what happened. Good night. Which is why I always say, never count your hatchlings before they chicken out. Because we're all going to be dead soon anyway. Daily Show CNN, GOP is not your friend. Christian Wright sit tight, making other folks fight. When does Hart Huckabee know that he asked? He can watch a Marshall law, even in Arkansas. Kill a Muslim or a Hindu, what's the difference? Make a deal, fuck you. Uh oh, this means we lose. Nominee, not for me. Why choose? Testament, testament, testament of lies. Offer me some respite. Offer me quietude. Nigh decline is the end of all days as we know of. It's the end of all days as we know them. It's the end of all days as we know them in these end times. These end times. The Liberal Grouch Cast is a copyright performance by Bill Schmalfeld. Copyright 2015. All rights reserved. The album... 2016 A Race Odyssey is available on CD or digital download wherever you buy quality CDs and MP3 downloads. They let me sell mine there too.